Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Armageddon Rag by George R.R. R. Martin. Not going to lie, I already shot an introduction to this, and the footage got corrupted. So, um, and now I actually don't even know where the book is. I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, um, so, um, yeah, this is the introduction to the video. We're just going to cut straight to the, the footage that I do have, so sorry about that. I thought this was an interesting quote. If it hadn't have been for the 60s, the 50s would have gone on and on forever. This guy sounds a little bit like me as well, um... He likes this this woman, but he says she's not crazy. Maybe that's not it. She's not even the least little bit crazy. I need crazy. And then Maggie says to him, you need sanity too, love. Remember, that's why we broke up. Okay, here at the start of chapter seven, we have the lyrics. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. And so uh, the title of the book we start to learn is from a song that the band has called um, Armageddon slash Resurrection Rag from the album Music to Wake the Dead. Start of chapter 9, we have the lyrics, It was 20 years ago today, Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. And then one of the, basically what's happened is the lead singer of the band got shot. And uh, this other character who was also in the band and who did the songwriting, he, he had this theory that the bullet was meant for him. So I'm going to read this, this section out. Facts and turn back to face him. Even when Pat was dead, I could not accept the fact that he'd been the star. I mentioned where the shot came from, the angle of the bullet. I still swear it passed close by me. For years afterward, I told my theory to Tracy and anyone else who would listen. I believed firmly that the sniper had been aiming for me and had only hit Pat by mistake when he strode into the path of the bullet. It made a certain amount of sense. I was usually stationary while Pat was constantly moving, an impossible target. And I was the one to blame for all that subversive, suggestive music. By all rights, I should have been the victim. Another reason for your retirement, Sandy suggested. Faxon nodded. I had no desire to be the second Kennedy. Yeah, in a way, I was upset that I'd lived. Pat's death made him a martyr, seemed to confirm him as the star. I was convinced that the assassination had been politically motivated, and I wanted to believe, no, needed to believe, that I was the one who'd needed silencing. Here I was, the Jesus of the Rock Age, saying all these wise and dangerous things in my songs, and the fools had gone and nailed up one of my apostles in my place. Didn't they know that I was the one who should have died for their sins? His mouth twisted down ruefully. He turned away sharply and shut off the burner. The silence of the sky wrapped itself around them once again because they're in a hot air balloon. Oh yeah, then we have a character called Maxwell Edison, which I assume is a nod to the Beatles with Maxwell Edison, majoring in medicine, calls her on the phone. Ba -da -ba -da -da. So someone asks here, um, when did the 60s end? The end of 69, Sandy said. Or the end of 70 if you're a purist, because there was no... Don't give me that calendar shit, Morse interrupted. I'm talking about the spirit of an age, not when the stupid belt ball fell in Times Square. The 60s began when Kennedy was assassinated and Nam got hot. So when did they end, Sandy? When? And instantly I'm here like Altamont, Rolling Stones, when uh, the Hell's Angels were working security and someone got stabbed to death. But then he says, um, no, it was um, it was West Mesa and the end of the Nazgul when uh, their lead singer got shot. Which would have marked the end of the 60s in this universe, really. All right, and then we get this twist, which... Um Basically, they're trying to work out who's like killing the members of this band and one of them um, One of them has a bar and it gets burned down and um, The theory is this guy wasn't trying to kill him He was trying to burn down the bar to take away his likelihood so that he was forced to rejoin the band And then this guy gets drunk and has sex with someone and doesn't remember it And he says he also felt obscurely cheated bad enough to sin and feel guilty worse when you can't even recall the fun you'd had Can't say it's ever happened to me the lyrics here at the uh, start of chapter 17, and in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me. And then I love this little uh, chapter here about a writer character. Uh, Sandy had been a writer for too long, and the writing was too much of a part of him, too, too deeply ingrained. Words were his defense, his addiction, the means through which he sorted and rationalized and justified his actions and experiences, the way he made sense of the world and gave his life whatever rough meaning it possessed. Ultimately, whatever might happen to him, he would try to understand it through his words. And finally the words came, breaking through even when he was stoned and drunk, distracting him from Beaver and Wally and Lumpy Rutherford, filling him with restlessness. The words came and there was nothing for Sandy to do but put them down on paper. Guess what? File got corrupted again. Basically what actually happened is my computer froze in the middle of doing something, and then I ran like the check this thing, and then it just decided that, hey, these two video files now have a file size of zero bytes. Hooray! Uh, anyway, I did enjoy this book. I gave it a pretty solid 4.25 out of 5, I would say, and I definitely would recommend, especially if you're into books about music, 
um, or fantasy, I guess, or like the 60s as well, or any combination thereof. Um, so yeah, check it out. So there we have it. That's what I thought of the Armageddon Rag by George R. R. Martin. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.